Hi, I'm Singa, an artist teacher working at a secondary school in the UK. Based on my experience, I made the Young Artist Art and Education project No Frame. Today, the project is introducing Rosie's work. Starting from A level, she has continuously been developing ways to express her inspirations and thoughts with clear artistic identity. Let's have a look at her discoveries. I was definitely one of those kids who spent most of my childhood outside. I think that's probably where that passion started. Key thing, themes of like simplicity, happiness, um, innocence, and 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 here like a safe space. I think that's kind of where that that particular project during A level was kind of stemming from. I went on a shoot around my village and my garden and um, was just looking at plants I could see and um, different, I think I also took some of some of the buildings around the village, like the windmill. I remember exploring and yeah, going on little adventures to start building up my own like collection of photographs based on things that I could see around my own personal local environment. Start looking at um, artists who are doing things with botanical drawings and all the layers and the collage and building up with all the different cut out plants that I was really excited by that and I wanted to start cutting out my own plant. There's a lot of pieces of paper that were just complete explosions. But I, I was making like so many because you never know what you're going to find within these shapes that just naturally form. Look for um, shapes such as leaves or tree branches that I could see within the paint and then start cutting them out and building up layers. And then these ones were all plants that I had um, dug up from my garden, <laughs> much to my mother's delight. And I brought them in to roll them in the big press at, at school. And putting them on the light box created these incredible, well, if you put them on the light box, you could see almost through them. They made this like translucent and beautiful. You could see so much detail and, and color. It really made all the colors so vivid. And I was, this is kind of like a defining moment, which was really exciting combining them all and layering them to create new pieces. Yeah, so there were so many different processes involved, as well as the intricately cut out pressed plants, which took me a lifetime. <laughs> I feel like I spent half my time at school just cutting out plants. The, almost the process for me has become, that is the art itself as well. The labour and the process is so important. I was taking some photographs looking up at trees as if I was a small child so I was being very conscious of um, linking that to my childhood. You know that childlike sense of wonder and looking at small little details, water droplets on leaves and things like that that we would maybe overlook and um, that's what I was thinking about when I did this shoot. Using my photographs and creating these new compositions to then take on to my powder paint pieces how many pieces I'd been collecting and I think that was so important that I'd gathered so many materials. I was thinking about how I could use these to create new compositions, new focal points and um, but also depth and structure in the piece. Giving you creative challenges, the fact that you're using so many different materials and techniques. Well, I think it was really important because I learned so much from it. Rosie's work was a constant pulling and pushing of the contrasting elements between spontaneous and organic and carefully planned and controlled aspects. For example, using powder paint allowed her to create fluid, unexpected shapes, mark makings and color combinations which bleed into each other. The pressed plants showed distressed, morphed shapes and colors that can be accidental. 
She then built layers onto her work with techniques that can bring the contrasting aspects using drawings, cutouts, stencils, and photo transfer technique to show delicate details with full control and this helps to make certain areas stand out. It was really significant as part of my learning. Like the whole contrast of messiness and control. It's hard to know when to stop adding layers and adding new bits because without it just becoming a big mess. It's so much pressure to create one final piece because there were so many combinations I could have done like it's hard to make that final decision of yes this is the overall composition that represents where how I've developed all my work. I think we are really studying about the secret of making good composition, secret of layering. I didn't know, I didn't have answer either so what we did is mark the piece that works in terms of composition. Why was it looking good? And we start to analyze it again. So what works? Her mission was creating a clear focal point where the viewer's eye is naturally drawn as a center of interest and flow within the picture plane. One of the interesting findings was, in order to bring the mood that she wanted with the blast of colors and the combination of different shapes to express the richness of nature and its depth, she must have some empty, quiet space to support these complicated layers as a breathing space to bring harmony. I knew that I wanted some kind of drips or like lines going across it because I was thinking about the structures in my garden that I'd seen. I guess I needed that as a focal point um, rather than just all these plants floating around. Mm. Um, I needed something grounding on the piece. So I was beginning to build up the layers of the plants to and bring in new textures and kind of create an overall feel of like an explosion of life and plants and the overall effect I wanted to create was a really rich and vibrant piece. We started adding the pastels in and the different um, reds and oranges to contrast against the greens and different parts of it stand out. I'm still using those key elements that I'd began during A-level, which was see it as the start of my practice really. Like my ideas then, which were based around my childhood and um, nostalgia and the plants and things that I was seeing and that I associate with my childhood and how that's developed into um, almost like the collective memory, like the history of the area of that route, mm -hmm. of the um, ancient Pilgrim's Way route. I kind of see that as all the stories and past of the p thousands of people that have walked it. So I can see how that original idea of past and nostalgia has developed into what it is now. A place in Portugal called Fatima where they burn like wax sculptures in the shape of organs and it's like an offering. So I was thinking of doing like what these wax offerings to the Iron Age fort and to the site because there'd been um, a Roman battle there. And so I was, so I made these wax organs to kind of heal the earth there. And um, so that's what that piece was about. And I did a film of them melting into the earth and into the soil at the site. So last week I got an email saying that the Turner Contemporary selected my work for the Platform Graduate Award. What is the secret? I've kind of set myself my own little rules within my practice and I'm really passionate about learning about the plant. I've gone to the archives at the cathedral and I've like read the old botanical books. I think it just highlights that um, our kind of A-level class and the people obviously who came after us and before us, it, there was a um, kind of sense of 
support system and almost collaboration and and I think it's really important to share and support each other and why this project is so special because it kind of continues that and I think that will really inspire other people. Rosie as I talk to you, I feel so inspired as an artist. I want to try what you tried and found out, experimented, and I want to try that and bring that in my practice. I want to give a go, and I definitely want to participate your next walk. So that journey, that walk, that revisiting, and that pilgrimage, valuing what people experience. Mm -hmm surrounding history and memory and um, people and, and, the, and how our relationship has changed through history with plants and but also questioning your own and the future of our relationship with our environment. I think it's so important to question it. <laughs>